The word is bands. With a D sound or without a D sound? Um, you said it's a homonym, and you told me what it means, but am I allowed to ask what its homonym means? All right, I'm starting over. B, A, N, D, what I have so far is B, A, N, D. I don't know if that was a great idea, but, oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that, oh well. I've had some of my friends sign the cards, like Chelsea, she's a good friend of mine. If I see that name and it's right next to the word, I kind of think that she's cheering me on, you know, to win the spelling bees. I also wrote down words on poster board and I glued them on here and I kind of made this little crossword puzzle. Who taught you these methods of learning spelling? I guess I kind of just came up with them myself. Angela was kind of giving him a hard time the other day because he didn't know any English. And she said, you know, you've been here for 20 years and you can't speak English. Says, well, I've been taking care of cattle for 20 years. They don't speak English. <laughs> He's worked here practically, I think, for about, what is it, 19 or 20 years now? 20. <clears throat> huh? 20. Three. 20. 20. I knew it was 19 or 20 he's worked here. He's a real reliable, he's a reliable Mexican. And of course you run on a few Mexicans pretty reliable. They're not all just bones and pranks, you know? There's a lot of good ones that mixed up in them. Border Patrol agents. Senator Judith Zaffarini wants to give agents the right to make arrests searches and seizures for violations of state law. The father of a border agent shot to death last year is the one who requested the legislation. They're just so proud that, I mean, they didn't come over here for nothing. They thought we would have better educational opportunities over here. And I guess it has all been worth it for them. Le pagué a un coyote 500 dólares y me vine a las Seis de la mañana de mi casa y para las seis de la tarde ya estaba en Alborquerque. 
He was scared because back in his youth, he had tried crossing illegally and he had gotten caught and spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time in an immigration detention center and uh, he wasn't treated very well. I kind of had an idea as old as I was, believe it or not, that you know we weren't doing what, what was right. Um, to me, I just, you know, I remember my mother as, you know, such an innocent girl back then that was, you know, had these two children. And I remember, you know, actually walking to the river. She held me by the hand and had my sister in her arms when we crossed. Who are you talking about, Angela? How, how did she learn to speak English so well since they speak Spanish all the time? Well, the first way, the first deal, she's smart. She she don't have to hear, hear something but one time, and she she knows what it is. When I took her home the other afternoon, she said, "Miss Slaughter, what if I don't win?" And I said, so you don't win. You know, you've, you're already, you've, you've won, so you don't spell the right word, okay. I said, then you don't have to study for the next month. She said, yeah, you know how she is, yeah. I have been waiting for it tomorrow, for that day. I've been waiting for it forever. All year. All year. And it's, I can finally say tomorrow is the regional spelling bee. I could finally say that. Um, as you know, the spellers are under a tremendous amount of stress and pressure, so we need to try for the audience to keep as quiet as you possibly can. Speller 21. Cultivation. Cultivation. C U L T I V A T I O N. Cultivation. Comedian. C O M E D I A N. Comedian. P O D A N T I C. Correct spelling. P E D A N T I C. Correct spelling, R-A-P-P-E-L-L-E-D. Could I have spellers 21 and 24 to the mic, please? Angstroms. Angstroms. A-N-G-S-T-R-O-N-S. Atrophy. Atrophy. A-G-R-O-N-S. Extenuate. Extenuate. Bludgeon. Radiosome. Chapeau. Renowned. Perpetual. Petronella. Interrogatory. Trophola. Grandilla. Feasible. Postprandy. Scatter. Population. Persicorean. Valetudinarian. Valetudinarian. B A L E T U D I N A R I A N Valetudinarian Cabania Cabania C A B A N Y A Cabania I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Angela, you now have a chance to spell the championship word. Crocodilian C R O C O D I L I A N. We have a chance.
an eighth grader in Perryton, was the guest of honor at a pep rally and parade today. Angela Renovar is off to Washington, D.C. this weekend for the National Spelling Bee. She's the regional spelling champ, and today, Angela's teachers and classmates gave her a royal send-off. Renovar, A-R-E-N-I-V-A-R, -E in case you're wondering. You cheated. See you tonight. <laughs> Good night. Man, I was crying after the spelling bee. I've, I've never cried, like, for being happy, you know? And that's how happy I was. Your dad was crying. He, oh, I've never seen my dad cry. Oh. He's going to go. He didn't really want to go at first, but, you know, he's been out here for 20, 25 years. He came here. His, I think that it would be closing for him to go to Washington and see Angela because this is what he came here for. He didn't come out here to work. I mean, that's part of it. But the closing in it for me, the end of the story is for him to get to go to Washington and see her. My parents were very pressured to succeed, especially in India, because academics there are taken very, very seriously. People from India have a very strict philosophy about education with their children, and I notice that with all the children from India who come into my class, I'm always thrilled to see any child come in who, who is from India because I know that they're going to have a great work ethic and they're going to be good students and it's, I've never been wrong, not one single time. Primatura, an extensive order of highly specialized insects that can you spell size? L-A-I-C-I-Z-E, B-U-S-H-I-D-O. And she always liked big words for some reason. Right? <laughs> yeah, the bigger the word, the better she liked it. She would say things like, I don't have any opportunities, when yeah. she had no idea what opportunity, opportunity meant, is, but yeah. she liked the sounds. So that's what we remember, in two and a half, and she had no opportunity. Munchausen. Oh, Munchausen syndrome. Munchausen. M-U-N-C-H-A-U-S-E-N. -E she had a lot of trouble beating um, the trio there, Sid, Alex, and Xu Jing. It was the eighth grade B, and they were going to send the eighth grade representative to the Tampa Tribune to compete. All we did was try to win. <laughs> well, yeah, I wanted to beat her. They would be like, oh, Nooper, we're going to go out there and we're going to beat you. We're going to try so, so, so hard. She and had this little tactic. She was, <laughs> she acted like she was not nervous. And then I remember one of the boys, especially the one who had seemed very confident, he got the word mongrel, and suddenly he blanked out. I spelled it M-O-N-G-R-O-L. I don't know. I guess I was just pretty nervous. And then it was the three of us, two of those boys and me. We went on for, I think, 11 or 12 rounds. Well, I got out on stethoscope. <laughs> he was a fast speller. He didn't like definitions. So he started going S-T-H-T. And then all of a sudden, he goes, and then he covers his face with his hands. And he's like, no. My word was uh, iridescent. I like. I thought it had two R's. Y'all thought it, it had two R's. Yeah, every, a lot of people thought it had two R's. And then they started looking it up in the dictionary, so he waited up there for five minutes, and I remember him wringing his hands the whole time, wondering, oh my gosh, am I right, am I right? He wanted to win. He wanted to win very badly. He was wrong. <laughs> so that's our story. She beat us. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the most nerve-wracking experience of this entire, of all these preliminary bees. <laughs> She was very happy, and her mother was very happy. I was boohooing, sobbing, you know, so hard that they came over to me and said, you must be her mother. They are part of this community. People accept them for who they are and can look beyond differences, you know, to find things that are common. We're very community involved. We saw one of the people from our community being recognized as a spelling bee champion. 
And uh, so we right away put it up and congratulated her. Last year, I would say the only bad experience I had the entire B was getting out. This year, I came back with a lot more determination. And I said, you know, you could always come back next year. And she said, oh, I am. I'm coming back next year. She said, I know what to do. I'm going to work. You don't get any second chances in India the way you do in America. M-A-Y-O-N-N-A-I-S-E, mayonnaise. That is correct. We have our winner. We have our winner. <laughs> Congratulations. Have you watched the National B on TV before? No, I never even heard of it before this year. The teacher just asked me if I wanted to be in it, and the school provided the $50. Wow. That's going to go right in the center of the mantle. I don't think Ted has any really close friends. And sometimes this school can be um, a little less than kind to new people. And new people who are especially a little different. And Ted is because he's that intelligent. But he knows how to handle that. His size helps him. There are a couple of smart kids in my grade, but not many. Our class only has like 40 kids in it. They just like using simple words, words that you'll understand. A lot of the time they just talk about the same things. This kid in my class, all he talks about is trucks. So anything you say to him that doesn't have to do with an engine or how the truck runs, besides real basic English, he won't understand what you're saying. Here's the peacocks. One of them is the five-year-old male. It's the one with all the feathers. We have a five-year-old female and like a nine-year-old female. If you pick them up by their feet and they hang like a J, they get real docile. Until they get a well, I like it out here. It's calm and it's peaceful. We don't end up having a lot of traffic. We can do pretty much whatever we want as long as we're not um, causing problems for anybody else. Older boy needs direction, and I think I, the Marines would be good for him. And his interests just are not things that it's not like I'd push him to do it, but it's the things he's interested in, guns and explosives and Told weapons and all that. He's got to be on the right that. side of the law with his interests or could. he'll be in jail. I think it's pretty cool. See, I know he's really smart. What is IQ? I think his IQ is one short of being a genius. I'm really not that good on um, spelling. I'm really good in math. I, I teach learning disabilities now, and I'm certified to teach regular education and learning disabilities both. And I think just had a lot of empathy for the kids that were struggling and having a hard time. because he's not real conceited about it and if he ever got that way we'd try and bring him down <laughs> a little bit 
Are you nervous about the national day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to Washington before. Pretty much stayed in the Midwest. Haven't been to the East Coast or the West Coast. I think this is going to open some doors for him to realize, hey, there's a lot of people out there that are like me. I will be able to fit in. You know, there may not be a lot of them, and they're not going to be. If there's no one that can really understand you, so it makes you feel like you're above them, but it's kind of strange. It's kind of hard to make friends when no one can understand what all you can do. love spelling. I do it because I want to compete. I want to say, hey, look at me. I'm good at this. Because I ride with people who are better than me, and I sing with people who are better than me. I am wary of sounding too smart. I just talk, I think, like a normal teenager would, maybe with some big words, but nothing out of the ordinary. Divided by 3x over 9 times x minus 2. OK, now, Emily, what are you going to do with a squared minus b squared? It's a difference of squares. Okay. So it's a minus b, a plus b. Okay. Most of the words that I learn, I don't know what they mean. I just remember how to spell them. And a lot of the ones I use are like a Moroccan desert wind. And when am I going to have a chance to use that in a sentence? Easy to spell cool and duh. <laughs> how do you spell duh? D-U-H. Oh, OK. Well, I hate all the words I've gotten out on. I hate oracle, acicular, and despotism are the three words I've gotten out on in the past three years. And I'm probably going to hate one more word after Washington's over. Cargador. What's the language of origin? Spanish. And uh, once a letter is said, you can't C -A -R -G -A -D -O -R. take it back. C-A-R-G-A-D-O-R. Cargador? Emily Stagg, guess the word correct. <laughs> the first year we went, we brought the au pair as well. We brought Claudia from Germany. And last year, I was just like, when we had to fill out a form and say who we're going to bring, I was like, Mom, you forgot the au pair. You forgot Marie, who was our then au pair. And she's like, well, I don't think we're going to bring the au pair this year. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> you know? But then we went, and it was like a family thing. It was like a real time to be with my mom and my dad, and it was nice. You're going on trips. You're going to picnics. You're going to ice cream socials. And I was very impressed. And the, on the first, tr first bus trip we had, before the actual spelling bee, I sat with a, a mother of a girl who was now back for her second year. And I vividly remember saying how wonderful this all seemed. And she said, well, I think it's a uh, different form of child abuse, which sort of took me aback. And then the next day, Emily's uh, you know, out on the first round and all the emotions that came with that. And you see your child who's really worked hard, seemingly you know, knocked down pretty hard. And you start to think, well, maybe, it's like, yeah, it is. maybe <laughs> this woman is right. Heuristic, Greek. Heuristic? Heuristic. Didn't we do this last night? I don't remember. At the beginning of the year, we talked about whether Emily wanted to work towards the goal of returning to the National Spelling Bee. I just almost feel like I would disappoint people if I didn't do as well as I did last year. My daughter is very capable and talented, and I know she could do well. So there's a part of me that wants to see her strive for that. On the other hand, I knew it would be a stress, and I really felt that it was her decision. I heard the winning word was something that I had studied. I would just be like, oh, that was dumb, you know? <laughs> Doesn't mean you would have gotten that winning word, though. 
Obviously, I'd like to win, everybody would like to win. I don't think that's realistic. People have told me I'm up there because I'm one of the few returning spellers, you know, that placed high. Um, I'm not holding my breath for anything great. like a movie. How's that? Because I go through different trials and tribulations and then I finally overcome them. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard. With the jobs and everything and economy being like it is, it's hard. And the health care situation, it's hard. I don't really go outside much because it's boring to me because I don't have any peers around here and if I do, well I don't I rarely see them. Our playground's over there. It's called Kids View. It seems like it's very fun for the boys because they play basketball. It's like wherever you go, if there's a basketball court, boys are always on there. Girls just <laughs> stand around talking and things. permeability, used especially of a substance that allows the passage of fluids. Permeability. Permeability. I look at Ashley, this is funny, like a little angel. It's almost like, you know, this perfect child is like of the full package all around. Think about it. This is supposed to be Oasis. I remember when she won citywide and I said, what's next? What does she study from? They said the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I tell you what, here. You open it up and wherever you go, that's where we're gonna start. Where do you start with the dictionary? A, in the middle? You know, I mean, where do you start? I hope it'll be a big turn on, um, on, um, what, what day is that? Doing the spelling day. I didn't call everybody. I just hope they have enough seats for them. <laughs> Two of her uncles are incarcerated, but they'll watch on TV. They'll be there with for regardless. Mm -hmm. what, what I would like for her to do, is when she, I'll be extremely happy when she crossed that stage in 12th grade with honors. I'll have a job that pays well, and I would love my profession, and I'll have a house, and I'll, um, and whenever my mother or family member needs me, I'll be there for them. I mean, they focus on children doing crime and always talking about negative, and then they have somebody that's from the district, that's representing the district, and they're not giving, I don't think they're giving Ashley a proper, you know, um, her props, put it that way. They told me I would receive a certificate and a bag full of goodies by the superintendent of D.C. Public Schools for winning the citywide spelling bee. There was a bomb threat in the building. Because somebody called and told him that they were going to bomb the building. Kind student is top speller, Ashley White. They made an error, 11 years old. She's 13. You see how this stuff is going on now? As far as publicity wise, they're not publicizing my, or, uh, or recognizing my daughter. They're not recognizing my daughter. But it's fine, it's okay. Because she's going to be all right. Ashley, tell the truth. When did you get your spelling, your spelling material, your real spelling material? March something. March what? Your contest was March 24th. It was like early in the beginning of the March. And if she won this, 
proved me wrong, but I know she won the race even if she lost at the Nationals. But I'm not thinking uh, pessimistically. I'm thinking optimistically. My baby going to win. And the word coming up for you is plague. Plague. Would you give me the definition? A destructively numerous influx or multiplication of obnoxious animals. Plague. Plague. P-L-A-G-U-E. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we're proud of you. Man, that is a glorious day of my life. You know I really, my baby, so that is great. See, look at her. She can't believe herself. That was the happiest moment of my life. I felt really good. I think I prayed. I prayed that night also. I've been praying. I think I'm a prayer warrior. I don't know why, but for some reason, I just can't stop praying. So whatever happens, I'll be happy for her, as long as she plays in the top 50. But I want her to win in first place. I would like for her to. As I go higher, my goals go higher also. And so I just gotta keep on reaching, keep on reaching. So this year, I rose above all of my problems and I went straight through the local, straight through the regional. I, I was determined that I was going to win the Citywide Spelling Bee. I told the photographer, he was like, so what are you going to do when you get to Citywide? I said, I'm going to win. And sure I did. I won Citywide Spelling Bee. Now I'm going to the Nationals. Hybrid. H Y B R I D. Hygiene. H Y G I E. Hymenium. H Y M E N T I. Ideology. Idiosyncrasy. Excellent. You've done 4,000 words and you got one mistake. You're doing good now. We did all the words that were ever given to us spellers in the competition. We collected the data from all the previous spelling bees and saw why people were failing on certain words and tried to correct that for our kids. So to derive it a complete number would be hard, but I can tell you that in the final days of the competition, we were doing between 7,000 to 8,000 words a day. Very good. Sacrosanct. Um, S-A-C-R-O-S-A-N-C-T. Sacrosanct means mostly holy, overly scared. Sardion. S-A-R-D-I-O-N. What we do is to get the meaning of the word, we get the language of origin, we get the root word, we tell them to use it in a sentence, we tell them to repronounce the word, we understand the meaning in our head, say the spelling alphabetically inside your own head, match it with the sound that you're gonna come out with that you just pronounced, repronounce the word in the head, and then spell the word out loud slowly. That's what we do. We have 46 words and you miss three words. That's not bad. And we still have 25 days. Yeah. So thank God for what we have. It is definitely a bonding experience. We were close, but this was like a crisis and we all had to pitch in to help whichever way we could. If I could help him pull his clothes out and make sure that they are ready for him when he takes shower and he can save two minutes, that also was important. When you fight in a war, Everybody has the same goal. He's only 12 years old. He's in the eighth grade. So he comes off the spelling bee cycle because he's academically advanced early on. So this is his first and last chance. This is my trophy for winning the Orange County Spelling Bee. And for like the rest of that afternoon, um, I was seeing like white flashes and stuff. I don't know why, I guess I was just like too happy or something. At the Spelling Bee, I mean, you'll find a lot of people that are bookworms, do wear really thick glasses, you know, the stereotypical quiet, shy, studious types. And then you'll find people like my brother, who's like an athlete, has like almost a black belt in Taekwondo. He hangs out with his friends, you know. We go, I mean, yeah, we do watch movies, we watch TV, you know, we have a life. I don't think every child can excel. And the reason it doesn't happen is because they don't have a way of concentrating on what they're doing. I think if everybody meditated, it, the competitions like spelling bees would become very, very difficult. We are very blessed and lucky 
to have kids like Neil and to be blessed with this abundance. I am so indebted to my uh, spiritual master and to God and to this country, you know, which will accept a stranger come in and give them this opportunity and uh, America is just great. This is our other house. Me and my brother built this house ourselves. Every single thing that you see here, we had no contractor, we got the subcontractors and we did it all. Granite, marble, fireplace, stucco work, Sheffield doors, backyard, hypoallergenic trees all around. There is no way you can fail in this country. That's one guarantee in this country that if you work hard, you'll make it. And that's not existent in the rest of the world, at least in many parts of the world. I am a firm believer of having the best coach for the problem that you have. The scent. Di. Oh wait, there's two. Yeah, this not coming down. This is to disagree. Di. S S E N T. Uh -huh. Well, I work with Neil Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We worked about three to three and a half hours, and I'd get home about 11 o'clock at night. And we did that four nights a week. And then Saturday, I would sometimes come up and work anywhere from four to eight hours with him. I'm tutoring him in French. He isn't taking French as a subject, but I'm tutoring him in the French words that may come up in the National Spelling Bee. Same thing we did with the, a Spanish teacher who came and showed them the Spanish words or why to break them down. And then we got a German teacher to come in and break down the German words. Now, fortunately for both of them, they've got excellent Latin teachers at school. But Neil is studying really hard. I mean, he's he's studying really hard. O H M M E T E R. You're wrong, Neil. There you go. Okay, we're done with the state B preparation. I think he's more serious about it than I was. No, you're forcing it on yourself. I want you to step back, take a deep breath, and use your technique again. Repronounce the word, please, for me. What are you trying to spell? S-E-D-E-R. Great, Neil. Not missing a single word. Senility. I, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit it is hard. But what is, what is valuable in life that is easy to achieve? Nothing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and. And I mean, after you studied so hard, it would, it would just be, um, it would just feel great to be up there and win. Epitaph. E-P-I-T-A-P-H. Epithet. E-P-I-T-H-E-T. Epitome. E-P-I-T-O-M-E. Equable. E-Q-U-A-B-L-E. Existence. E-X-I-S-T-E-N-C-E. Keep on going, champ. Description. Here she is winning a B in, this was seventh grade, and um, Billy, her brother, look what he put, another face on the, he made a little cartoon face. My mom and dad both like to play with words and make funny sayings and stuff like that. Ain't Miss B Haven, and, and I have stationery that says be happy, B-E-E, -E, and it's bumblebees flying around. I think that's where my love of words came from. Well, you're full of jabberwocky tonight, aren't you? Well, I got another word for it. <laughs> <laughs> they remind me of Edith and Archie Bunker, <laughs> because Archie's always getting mad at Edith for being dumb. And the cover is just, has fallen off. She was really glad to get the new one because this one had had gotten kind of battered. However, we'll never throw it away. Smithsonian material. <laughs> I think I worked pretty hard, and maybe a little too hard. Um, in the summer, I kind of worked around eight to nine hours a day. But um, as school began, I just worked about five or six hours a day. Our lives have revolved around April and the spelling bee. I mean, I hardly could see my friends. They would call me up and say, when yeah. can we get to, together for lunch, breakfast, whatever you, you can squeeze in? Um, well, the spelling bee's coming up, and this was just the regional. This is the regional 
word lists and sponsor me guide collection. I ended up going through this book three times and all. And I pretty much memorized it. She didn't even like to go to the mall. It became no. where that was actually. Yeah, very, uh, a young girl that doesn't her, want to right. go to the mall. I mean, with girlfriends. Not, right. not with the parents, with the girlfriends. Right. Oh, I can't, I can't go. They want me to go Friday night, but I can't go because I got to study. I can't, uh, you know, we'd say, April, lighten up, you know? In the classroom, if there's a break right away, out come the cards and the notebooks. I'm also the softball coach here, and she was part of the team, but any break in play, if it was a stop her for whatever reason, out came the spelling words. The kids used to tease her, yeah. even in the beginning of this year. They would say, oh, April, why don't you get a life? How can anybody want to study words and not have another interest? Besides spelling, I like to ride roller coasters. And I'm a vegetarian. And I like to drink coffee. <laughs> Here's another one, look. I can't even pronounce these words. It's rather sad, but I know she can. It's just uh, a world of, of knowledge here. I'm, I, I want to go back to school, to tell you the truth. No, I've been working in the bar business 45 years. Yeah, I was born across the tracks. That was the uh, depression center back there. That was all the houses for the uh, people who worked in the asbestos mill. And then they found out that the uh, asbestos the stuff was coming up, seeping through the ground, so they closed it all off now. There's a lot of people in this town that have asbestosis, died from cancer. I was riding go far. I went from that side of the street to this side of the street, really. Not a real success story. You know? I'd always used to dream that I'd go down on an easy word or something like that. I never dreamed of doing well or anything like that. I pretty much always had a pessimistic attitude. Only one night did she say to me, Mom, I would really want to win this thing. And I said, oh, I know, April. I, I didn't want her to get disappointed, though, or have too big a goal. But I loved hearing that she was giving that thought because sometimes her confidence was a bit shaky. So I was happy to hear that that was in the back of her head. I would really like to win this B. Wait, I can, I'm, I'm going to start over. Okay. Moshe and Izzy are working in a factory, and Moshe asks Izzy, what time is it? And he says, it's 3 o'clock. And later he asks him again, what time is it? And he says, it's 3.30. And later he asks him again, what time is it? And he says, it's 4 o'clock. And later he asks him again, what time is it? And he says, it's 4.30. Then Izzy asks Moshe, when you go home at night and it's dark out, how do you know what time it is? And he says, oh, that's simple. I get out my horn, blow a little toot toot on my horn, and everybody, pull, and everybody pulls up their shades and yells out, you idiot, what are you playing your horn for? It's 3 o'clock in the morning! I guess you could call me talkative. Not really. I mean, if, I mean, I can't, I, uh, but, yeah, sort of. This is a dictionary. A big dictionary. I don't know why it's in my room. Okay, but it seems like it's got all sorts of pieces of paper in there. Oh, yeah, um, well, that was so my mom could find the definitions of the word we, words we were studying. This thing isn't edible, is it? <laughs> <laughs> in fourth grade, Harry entered the Heaven Glenrock, a fourth, fifth grade B, which is not related to the Howard scripts at all. And he was out, he was the first person out, the very first person out. How many hours a day would you say that you spent studying with your mom? Mm -hmm. Maybe one half or one or maybe one quarter. I don't know. I really don't know. Probably one half, that is my guess. Does this sound like a musical robot? This year I saw an ad in the record about the B, and we didn't practice for it at all because I didn't even realize, I forgot what day it was. Day, Harry never came home with a paper. One day, it's a Friday, I come home from, I usually come home about the same time as he does from, from my office. 
He's not home. I wait and wait. It's like 3.30. He's not home. I call up the school, I call the library, all the places I think he might be at the school. Finally, someone gets on the phone and says, oh, I have some good news for you. Harry won the spelling bee. <laughs> Harry and this boy, Ashke, uh, they were the last two in the last B, and uh, they went for a very long time. They told me they never had a B go that long. We went for quite a while before before um, he finally missed discotheque. In my generation, everybody knows discotheque, but in this generation, the kids really don't. But we had studied discotheque, and Harry knew as soon as you could see it. He's there, and he's like, he just couldn't wait to get up there and spell it. And that was just one of the words that stuck in my head for some reason. Look at this. Hooked on phonics worked for me. <laughs> Acropodian, aristic, rayonant, cucurbit, orenda. I'm a little nervous right now, but I think that's natural. I think every speller is a little bit. Lanero, sterolatry. I'm nervous. <laughs> There's so much luck in it. It's not, you can't not be nervous. It's too scary. Well, I don't think I'll win, but I'm going to try hard anyway. It will be fun either way, though. Right there, like that. Well, I think the parents and children who come away with the most valuable experiences are the ones who approach it with realistic expectations. I don't really expect to win. <laughs> I don't know, I've studied enough. So I just have to see what happens. How was the trip to the capital today? <laughs> the part we went to, which was about five minutes, that was fine. Then Mom and I decided we'd rather study and went home in a taxi cab. Left me high and dry. <laughs> of all the 10 million participants, there's only going to be one child at the very end holding that trophy high above the head. I would spill all the words if I had to get to win $10,000. I, you could, I would spell every word in a dictionary. Repetitor, clavison, marat, cabotinage, cabotinage. It has been a very odd experience for me because uh, I do get stopped. I have been stopped in restaurants in Ohio and uh, just total strangers say, I've seen you, I know I've seen you somewhere. And then suddenly remember or people just walk up out of nowhere months from now and say, I, I've seen you on television. I want to shake your hand. If you start to spell a word, or can you, and you stop in the middle, you know, you ask for information, then, you know, like language organs and stuff. Like, can you see the first letter, then answer the language, and then keep, and once you know that, keep on spelling? One of them just came running up because he said he wanted to tell me that he really enjoyed hearing Old English pronounced. And, uh, then he took off. Pernicious. I was in total shock at how huge it was, how grand the whole affair would be. Oh yeah. Is that I picture myself getting that winning word and then jumping up and screaming and getting a trophy. And I picture myself um, appearing on Rosie O'Donnell.
cephalalgia. Cephalalgia? A pain in the head. <laughs> cephalalgia. Cephalalgia. C E P H A L A L G I A. Cephalalgia. Fly back. Z W I E B A C K. Fly back. T U Y E R E T A. T R A C H O D O N. Trachodon. Nephalognosy. Dysphagia. Xerostomia. Quake reversal. Siphonapterology. Can you repeat that word again, please? Zaibatsu. Chateaubriand. May I have a language of origin? It is from uh, Amboinese. Is the origin Latin? And it's French. P H A L O N. Encephalon. D I L L A. Lycanthrope. A werewolf is a lycanthrope. I just hope and I pray to God that I get a presentable place or a good place at least. The top five, top ten, it went it really doesn't matter to me. It's I mean spelling. It's something that I love to do. How can you compete and be scared? You're trying to win. Like it through. round one. Mattock. Mattock. Can I have the definition, please? A mattock is a My mom tells me that sometimes I would be saying words in my sleep. I was so scared and nervous. Um, because I, I really wanted to get past that first day. Well, it's more intense than any competition because in, in baseball, your kid gets up in the first inning, he strikes out, he gets up in the third inning. Then he gets up in the sixth inning and the ninth inning. This one, one letter, and you're out. Matic. M-A-T-T-O-C-K. <laughs> he can memorize all those words or not. <laughs> yeah, he plays to win. Distractible. Distractible. D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-A-B-L-E. Distractible. Distractible is D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. How you feel? Fine. Just kind of annoyed. I was surprised that a, that a, that an easier word got him after practicing those big old long jawbreaker words. I think Ted's got the advantage of parents that think it's great that he's here, irregardless. He's a champ in my eyes. I still think he spelled it right. Wheedle. 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 Wheedle or wheedle. 
Weedle. Weedle. If I win the national spelling bee, oh man, I'd be ecstatic. I would like for her to to be satisfied with whatever place she gets. However, uh, from what I saw yesterday, there isn't any reason why she can't win. Could I please have the language of origin? Uh, the origin of the word is unknown. Weedle. 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 W H E E D L E. E R V A I L. Dr. Cameron. That concluded round two. At this time, we are going to take our 15 minute mid morning break. Spellers, you need to leave your placards on your chairs, and we will resume spelling at 10 20. So this time, you just want to get through the next round. This time, I want to get a word that's either like passimology, which I know passing means signs, or I want to get a word that I've studied, like something from Nat's notes that I actually remember, which is like 5%. What's really special about being at the Bee is, whereas in New York where we come from, Amy is considered kind of like a geek, you know, because she's into the words and she's into the vocabulary, and the kids look at her when she uses these words that she doesn't understand, what, that they don't understand. When we come here, it's so refreshing to see all of these bright kids in one environment and here she's accepted, here she's one of the crowd, here she's popular. Everybody loves her here. You know, I've not had any lunch or dinner or breakfast or nothing, because I just cannot eat. <laughs> Neil's paternal grandfather in India has actually uh, paid 1,000 people to be chanting and praying uh, around the clock for Neil to win. And should he win, I believe he's going to pay to feed 5,000 people in India. So there's a lot more resting on this than just maybe the $10,000 price and all the glory he'd get here. There are a lot of hungry people in India that could be fed if Neil wins. We will go right on to round three. Odyssey. Odyssey. O D Y S S E Y. Odyssey. Helioplankton. Helioplankton. Could I please have the definition? Uh, plankton typical of small bodies of still fresh water. H E L I O P L A N K T O N. Helioplankton is H E L E O P L A N K T O N. I don't have to prepare for spelling bees anymore, mm -hmm. but I think I will kind of miss it. Really, a lot of time preparing. Is it, is it pretty disappointing when you're up there or what goes through your mind? Not really. I already feel like a champion. Just getting there. I mean, I think that's enough because a lot of people don't even accomplish that. K R A V A T. Cravat. Crap. Definitely. 
definition, please? Last year, I got out in the third round, and I was already nervous because that was kind of like my jinx round. Even before the base, like we, had, we were trying to work through lists, which, which we didn't do last year at all. Yeah. Because I thought she's so close that maybe this word or the other word we do, or maybe, you know, it could be just one of those words that would help. I don't know what happened, maybe I blanked out, maybe the pressure was getting to be too much, but I asked whether it had anything to do with the word Corolla. Um, does it have to do with like a Corolla? What's a Corolla? Uh, I don't know, like the car? <laughs> I'm sorry, we need a, we just need a little more information. If you can. Every time she went to pronounce a word, I, I, for some reason, I closed my eyes. I didn't realize that I'm closing my eyes, but I just don't know why I did it. <laughs> I got so nervous then. I just kept the, when she walked up, whoa. If I had blood pressure, it would have rocketed into high sky. May I have the definition again? A proposition that follows upon one just demonstrated and that requires no additional proof. Corollary. C-O-R-O-L-L-A-R-Y. Mercenary. M-E-R-C-E-N-A-R-Y. Mercenary. Fibula. F I B U L A. Kookaburra. Kookaburra. I think if I get out really early, I'm going to be like a little bit of relief, kind of like, oh, it's over. I don't have to do this again. I can be a normal kid. But most of it, I think, is going to be. How come I didn't do as well? You know, I don't want to go back home and tell kids, oh, I got out in the first round again, or I got out in the second round this time. K-O-O-K-A-B-U-R-R-A, -O -O -A, kookaburra. Ecclesiastical. Would you give me the definition, please? This is an adjective. It means belonging to, suggestive of, or suitable for use in a church building or service of worship. Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastical. 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 Am I pronouncing the word correctly? Ashley, why don't you lower the microphone just a little bit and turn toward us? There you go. Ecclesiastical. Ecclesiastical. E. C, C, L, E, C, C, L, E, A, S T I C A L. Ecclesiastical is E C C L E S I A S T I C A L. spellers that will be coming back to spell tomorrow and we'll see everyone back here in the morning to begin promptly spelling at eight o'clock oh I just die really I just die I just die well I he wait for the word and I heard disclaim it and I said okay she, I know she could handle that and the next word was kookaburra 
I had no clue what this word was. And she, she, she saw me paint. <laughs> and she, she smiled at me and told me, I know this word. Okay, supper? Do you eat now? I'll eat. First food today. I could spell some of the words, but I couldn't spell all of them. And I hate to say it, but there was some relief. Like, oh, I didn't get that word. I'm so happy. Oh, baby. <laughs> Every time it was nearing for April to spell, my hands were wet right in the center here, just real wet. And then when she spelled her word and I breathed a sigh of relief, they would dry instantly. I walked around this hotel three times, <laughs> outside. Right before she got ready to spell, I walked around, and then I would come back just as she was spelling it three times in a row. That's too, no, that's too much. I don't even expect to get past uh, the first round tomorrow. But we're more optimistic, and and that feeling she has there, um, I I wish she could just shake it because she, she has a lot going for her, and I think she's going to do very well. I don't know. I just I'm more of a pessimist, but the the words get really hard, and it's really the luck of the draw. One thing I remember that as the spelling bee approached its uh, end with three and then two and so on, my father was right on the, uh, on the steps leading up to the, uh, the stage. And as soon as I spelled the word correctly, he rushed onto the stage. He was not an emotional man in general, but he was very emotional at that time. It was a big thing getting the National Spelling Bee, of course. And my older brother had made it to the second day of competition got a word that he unfortunately misspelled, and that really broke my mother up, and she was crying in the balcony, and I tried to comfort her, and I told her, Mom, don't worry, I'll win it for you someday. 1985, I was so focused on this that they actually selected four people to lay uh, a wreath at Arlington Cemetery at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And so they called me a couple days before the championship and they said, hey, you know, you've been selected. Would you like to be there as, as part of this? I didn't even ask my parents. I'm like, no, I gotta study. It's an extremely heady experience for any child. You know, you go from being relatively anonymous to being mobbed by all the major media in the United States. I don't think it really helped me in my love life, my nascent love life. Uh, I think that having won something like that could be regarded as being a significant liability. We got letters from places that we never heard of because, you know, it appeared in all the national newspapers. So from a local newspaper, somebody put a cutting in an envelope and then addressed it to Balu Natarajan, he won the National Spelling Bee. People always knew about it. Oh, she's the girl that won the Spelling Bee. And it's certainly something that has always captured people's attention and imagination. It's, it's just a great Americana tradition that has basically filtered out throughout the entire world. One thing he said they'll always remember is she won the first Spelling Bee. And that is true. I, mean, I get the, the, the credit for being the first. Yesterday, we began with 249 spellers. Today, 104 remain. By mid-afternoon, one of them will be declared the 1999 Scripps Howard National Spelling Bee Champion. At this time, I would like to turn the 72nd Annual Scripps Howard National Spelling Bee over to Dr. Alex J. Cameron with the 605th word of the competition. Thank you. The word is bands. It's a plural noun. Uh, this bans means notice of a proposed marriage proclaimed in a church or other place prescribed by law. Bans, 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 bans. There's got to be something I can think of. Take a deep breath, Harry, and let's finish the word, please. 
right, I'm starting over. Let's see, uh, what do I have got so far? Uh, bands. I got B A N D. Got to think of something. Harry, turn yeah. toward the microphone and let's finish the word, please. Okay then. B A N D. I was just trying to anything, but, um, well, the guy pronounced it wrong anyway. How'd he say it? Bands. I didn't know it. People told me that if I was Catholic, I might have known it, <laughs> because it was, it's a church word. It's, they put up, it's something to do with uh, some certificate they put up when someone's going to get married in the church. I probably should try something like D-E-S or T-S or, um, or even N-D-S. And I felt bad for the boy who, who was from Texas and got Yenta. 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 Or even DZ. Something. But uh, for some reason, I didn't take any of those, well, you can't really call them good ideas. And I went with, but I went with the worst idea, which was DS, and I got out, uh, got out. But still, he did pronounce it wrong, even though I did make my worst guess. Darjeeling. Can I have the etymology, please? It's from a uh, Bengali geographical name. Darjeeling. Say it toward us again, Neil. Darjeeling. Slow down the ending. Darjeeling. No. Darjeeling. Darjeeling. So this is a noun. A noun. Can you pronounce the word again, please? Darjeeling. This is the last spelling bee I'm ever going to go to. And so it would feel good to come out successful at the last one, but I'm, I'm still ha happy if I go into the comfort room, and at least in like one of the high higher rounds. After Neil finishes the spelling bee, and after he's done with all this, at least he'll have fond memories of what what it was to strive for something that's very difficult and to keep your mind focused whether you succeed or not, you still continue to strive in other things. Darjeeling. D A R J E E L I N G Darjeeling. Viand. I sit there with so the camera nervous. and don't take any pictures. It's like I'm like paralyzed by seeing her at the mic. You can know every single word in a round but one and get that one. It's statistical. I mean, you're not going to do well without having trained. Is it from French? Yeah, Latin, but from French to us. And the French word bien, meaning neat? Yes. Vian. The. I A N D, Viand. Palimpsest. Palimpsest. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Palimpsest. 
this is not the most important thing in life to be a best speller in the world. In your spare time, if you can do the spelling and then do well, that's good. Otherwise, you know, it's not that important. Well, she had those words down. She was determined to come back this year. Come she back. wanted to go the whole way. Palimpsest. P-A-L-I-M-P-S-E-S-T. Palimpsest. Alligur. Alligur. Can I have the language of origin? Latin. Alligur. A L E G A R. I could tell by her. Her flair, whatever we can call that. That she studied that word. Convert mentally into something concrete or objective. I can too. <laughs> Be happy. Be me. This concludes round four. There are 48 spellers remaining. At this time, we are going to take our break. You need to leave your placards on your chairs, spellers, and you need to be back promptly at 11.50 in time for the 12 o'clock ESPN live broadcast. Welcome to Washington, D.C. for the 72nd annual Scripps Howard National Spelling Bee. We're at the Grand Hyatt Hotel, where yesterday 249 spellers began competition. Through the first three rounds, overnight 104 survived. We're now in the fifth round. There are 46 spellers remaining. Well, it's as difficult as handicapping, say, the uh, Belmont Stakes, but can you give me a couple of people to watch today? I do have a couple favorites today. Let's watch for Emily Stagg. She's from Connecticut, and she's done a great job uh, with foreign languages, which helps a lot with spelling, and this is her third visit here. My other favorite is George Thumpy. He's from Missouri, and he placed fourth last year. He's homeschooled, and he seems to study spelling around the clock. I'd put my money on Georgie. He was in top five last year, and he had a very good understanding of the words. I mean, you could tell this kid was processing the information. I think that George Thampy will do probably do well. He was incredible last year. He remembers everything he studied uh, when he was uh, four or five or six years old. Whatever he learned at the age of four, he still remembers every bit of it. He doesn't have to review anything at all. This country needs uh, godly values. We are uh, in a bankrupt society with respect to uh, principles and uh, character. Georgie Thank, he's going to Washington, D.C. again for the National Spelling Bee, where he came in fourth last year. I believe he's going to win it all this year. But you know, that's not the most remarkable thing about Georgie. His father has told me on a number of occasions that Georgie honors his father and his mother. That is a lot more important to God, and that's a lot more important to George's future. This tweet and the tips I have for others, Bill, is one, trust in Jesus, trust and believe in Jesus, two, honoring your parents, and three, hard work. All right, 46 spellers are ready to begin competition. The speller on stage right now is Neil Kadakia. Hipsometer. H Y P S O M E T E R. Hipsometer. Apocope. The language that this word is from? Apocope. Well, I think it's a peculiarly American tradition. Competition is, is um, a more
more important part of an American children's mm. upbringing, I think, than it is a European, European child. That's part of my misgivings now. It's kind of just like everyone saying, oh, you're going to win. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm really not. Um, the beginning, does it come from the word ah, meaning like not? I don't see that listed here. Apocope. A P O C O P E. Apocope. This concludes round five. There are 17 spellers remaining. Cassette Audace Microfakia Beignet Cucurbit Hellebore Telebore no. Hellebore 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 is any of a genus of poisonous herbs of the buttercup family having showy flowers with petaloid sepals Helios meaning um, sun? No, I don't find that listed here. Hellebore. H E L E B O R E, hellebore. Hellebore is H E L L E B O R E. I made it through the first day and I was pretty happy with that because that was the first goal I set. And then on the um, on this second day, my second goal was to was to make it to ESPN, and then I made it to ESPN, and so and then I set another goal to make it into the top ten, which I did. Come ninth at 12 years of age is phenomenal. Um, because he's in the eighth grade, he might not be able to come back. But I know that if he's 14 and he was in the eighth grade, we would have an easy street two more years in a row. But that's not what it is all about. So for us, it was great. Just phenomenally great. There are eight spellers remaining. We are now ready to begin round seven. Speller number 28, you may step to the microphone. Acelus, A C E L U S, Acelus. Quinquevere, Q U I N Q U E V E R E. Repetitor, Repetitor, or Repetitor. Can I have the origin, please? I didn't panic when I heard the word because I thought maybe I could figure it out. You just almost can taste victory and it just seemed like um, it, it could be, it, it could be coming our way. 
Repetitor. 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 R E P E T I T E U R. Clavison. Can you pronounce the word one more time? Clavison. 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 C L A B I S O N. Clavison? Clavison is C L A V E C I N. We are incredibly <laughs> proud of Emily. Absolutely. Emily Absolutely. did a phenomenal she job. Did. There's a bunch of kids and they're they're all very good. And yeah, I think I think the kids in the end all all had the chance of winning. I think the last probably the last eight. Part of me is kind of just like, you know, it's over. This part of my life is over. And that, that's a little bit of a letdown, but I can throw away the books. <laughs> Don't have to do it again. Cabotinage. Could you repeat the word again, please? Cabotinage. Cabotinage. Inside, I had butterflies in my stomach. May I have... A sentence, please. My heart was pounding, my hands were clammy. I was just trying not to dwell on the fact that there were thousands of people in the audience. Cabotinage. Cabotinage. C A B O T I N A G E. Four spellers remain. April, you may once again step to the microphone to begin round 10. There is a homonym to this word. Uh, the word is terrine or terrine, and this one means uh, relating to this world of life, mundane. Does this come from the root terra, meaning earth? Yes. OK. Terrine, T-E-R-R-I-N-E. She calmed me because she was very cool up there. She manages to stay that way and yet um, and maybe when we go back to the room, she'll fall apart a little, but uh, up on the stage, she really keeps a very good presence. So I'm real proud. I'm happy with my placement. I'm a little disappointed because I only missed one letter. I guess I wouldn't be any happier if she won. It wouldn't have made any, any difference to me. If she had won or come in second, I mean, she just did so good. C-U-R-T-L-E, Kirtle? Kirtle is K-I-R-T-L-E. That concluded round 10. There are two spellers remaining. At this time, we will be moving to the championship word subsection. Opsimath. Opsimath. Yeah, Opsimath. Opsimath. O P. 
S O M A T H. Opsimath is spelled O P S I M A T H. Now that does not necessarily make Nooper the winner. Logaria. Logaria. May I have a definition? Pathologically excessive and often incoherent talkativeness. Logaria. May I have a sentence, please? The patient's logaria was indicative of deep emotional problems. Somehow or other in America, spelling, although it's a fairly mechanical process in small communities, it was identified with you know, the beginning of being able to read and write and handle language. In this country, spelling has always been a community process. We tried to raise them that try, and if you do it, great, and if you don't, just roll on. Oh my God, I'm sixth. But I could have won. I knew those words that she was spelling. Did you know the words that she got? No susceptor and Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm so mad. <laughs> I know, I'm just like, oh, I could have won. Some part of me wants to think that I could have gotten that word right. And if I'd gotten that word right, then maybe I'd have a chance at winning or something like that. <laughs> There's such a thing, I guess, as, as coming too close and yet not coming, you know, close enough. But um, that's, there has to be someone in third place, right? If I lose, it'll be okay because I'll be upset for a little while and then I'll rise above it because that's just another obstacle. In America, back in the 18th century, people had this sense of opportunity. You could leap out of one social class, you could move up, and I think they understood education was a basic part of that. The process of going through something that complex, that hard, and you still put in the energy with a passion. And if they can do that in anything else that they take in, these very qualities will make them successful and happy at what they do. I don't know that I could do that for my family. I don't know that I could say, well, you know, we're going to another country so that you can have a better way of life. Maybe it's because of my background that I work so hard. He has said that if he were to die today, he would die a happy person because he feels like we have, um, accomplished what he wanted us to. Oh, do you want to talk to me? We've got new permania here. <laughs> I go to college, and I want to do something in neurology. Just forget about all the people in the audience, forget about all the other spellers. See, right now we're seeing video of you coming home, and you said it kind of shocked you how many people actually showed up for that. Yeah. It, it, can, you yeah. can get a sense of belonging in America, outside of India, which you don't get anywhere else. We wanted our children to have that. Logoria. L O G O R R H E A. That is correct. Since I am most proud to present the 1999 National Spelling Bee Champion.